All right, so a lot happening in crypto this week. Coinbase comes in with their Q2 earnings and a lot more. What we're going to break down today is some indicators that are going to probably give you guys some ideas of maybe with the direction of where Coinbase is going. It might not necessarily be the direction you think, but it's good. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into TechBath. All right, so let's get into it. I want to thank our sponsor today, and that is iTrust Capital, long-term holding. Whether you're doing Bitcoin, Ethereum, you're looking at maybe some of the altcoins or maybe even gold and silver. All that can be directed over on your crypto IRA right there with iTrust Capital. If you visit their website, one thing you will notice is a new milestone they're about to hit. Seven billion in transactions and almost 200,000 accounts created. So definitely one of the top uh, companies out there in terms of crypto IRA. Make sure and check them out. You can get a $100 funding reward just by using our link. All you have to do is click the link down below. It does help us out. All right, so let's get into a couple of points here today. And I want to get into this first topic here, and that is, is Coinbase shares dip despite earnings beat? Now, this has happened across the markets. I won't say at large because there were some earnings that we saw this week that came in and we saw you know the stock re respond very positively. But with Coinbase, there is a bit of a you know, cloud holding over them right now. And that, of course, is the SEC lawsuit. But they did outperform Q2 estimates with a 770 million revenue, which is pretty significant. And analysts, analysts are divided on Coinbase's outlook, obviously, because of this situation with the SEC. I want to get over to this first clip with Brian talking about uh, where Coinbase is going. Listen in. And our goal is to become the primary way people manage their financial lives all over the world enabled by these powerful decentralized protocols that will become a larger fraction of the global economy over time. A big focus for us over the next year is how we're going to be driving utility in crypto that goes beyond just trading. My belief is that the next 10 years in crypto will become predominantly about non-trading use cases. Well, payments is a big one. We'll also see the rise of decentralized identity systems with decentralized messaging and social apps that will accompany those connected right into those decentralized identities. We like to say that on-chain is the new online, so we're fully embracing that. All right, so good news. If you're looking at Coinbase as an investment, they're looking at expanding considerably into some new things. The second clip goes about, and I guess really kind of breaks down their market share. Listen in. I, I think in general, we've seen a flight to quality. You know, we did see um, Binance US exit the market, which could have been one of the factors. For instance, in the UK where Binance exited and we saw our share gain, you know, Binance offers lots of different products and services. Not all of those we are going to be able to offer, frankly. We may not be allowed to offer. But, you know, if I look at our data, at least when you compare it to, um, you know, some of your key competitors in the US, like Robinhood, I mean, it seems like you are seeding some share. Is it because, you know, the price hikes, uh, you're seeing some pushback from uh, the users, or is there any sense of that? So, as we said, we experiment heavily with any fee change that we roll out to our users, and we're not seeing any change in behavior based on fee changes that we made in Q1 on our platform. We think that we offer a differentiated product suite, and that over time, this will really attract and grow users to our platform. So, listen, Coinbase has an opportunity here. They could seize it and really go head on against what I think might be their bigger competitor here in the United States being Robinhood. And when you look at Robinhood, you also have other aspects to this. Here's Revolut suspending their crypto uh, platform again here in the United States because of regulatory uncertainty. A couple of things they notice here, U.S. customers won't be able to buy uh, crypto on Revolut. This is starting September 2nd, but can continue to sell for 30 days after that. So not that Revolut would be a big you know, competitor here, but the point is, is that if you look at Revolut situation, it only impacts less than 1% of Revolut's crypto customers globally. So it's not a big ding on them. So they could still come back into the U.S. and they talk about coming back in the U.S. in the future. Revolut would be a formidable foe for Coinbase. So I think Coinbase has a timing here, timing issue. One, of course, they're competing against Gemini and Robinhood right now. Binance is kind of off the table. This is an opportunity for them to seize the gauntlet, I think, and really kind of accelerate their growth. And what we're going to talk about further in this video, so make sure and stick around for it, is how they're going to do it. Let's get into this next clip. I think you guys are going to like this one. This goes into a little bit about base and why they're launching it. Listen in. Ultimately, we hope to get every payment in crypto under one cent and one second confirmation. That would be a real game changer uh, globally. 
you know, text messages, I think at their peak reached about 25 billion uh, text messages a day. But when WhatsApp came online, it got to 100 or 125 billion messages a day. And it just showed you people wanted to send more text messages. It's just that the friction was high. You know, it cost a little bit too much. The friction internationally was, was there. The features weren't there. And so I think the same thing could happen with payments. And on top of the uh, the optimism stack, which is one of the layer two protocols, we've, we've launched um, our own layer two solution called Base, which is being decentralized over time. And um, a lot of developer interest has happened and there's a lot of activities we're doing around that. All right, so good news there. Base is getting ready to launch or is launching. And we're going to see a lot of things happening around Base. Uh, and I think the, the scenario when you compare Base and where the future might be, there's a lot there. We'll, we'll continue to break this down for you. But one thing they are doing is this thing called OnChain Summer, which is a multi-week celebration featuring the best of OnChain ecosystem, 50 leading products, artists, creators, all coming together uh, to support Build on Base, uh, the main that launching August 9th, so just here next week. A couple other aspects that you want to look at is this on-chain summer. And basically, it's a very limited amount that you have to basically bridge ETH on to be able to participate. And it's pretty significant because there's a ton of partners here that are already tied into this. Obviously, you, we know about optimism. And by the way, maybe you're new to our show and you're starting to learn about crypto for the first time. What I would ask you to do is just hit the like button right now and subscribe to the channel. Hit the little bell. We'll give you some notifications when we go live, but it's also a way for you guys to keep in the loop here as things start to change. And this is going to be a big factor to track along because Coinbase, I think, is in on the uh, the cusp of something pretty interesting. I wanted to highlight this little uh, blog post they had right here celebrating the on-chain summer. But one thing that is interesting here, I want to showcase this right here. So all you have to do is uh, mint this unique releases from a lot of these partners. And within that, you're going to be able to do some interesting aspects. You're going to be able to, new users now, can earn up to 50 bucks in crypto for getting started. That's good. And including the new quest on ETH, which is that minting portion on base using Coinbase wallet or a Web3 wallet. So that's good. And then any wallet that mints an on-chain summer drop will be eligible to reach 60 days worth of Coinbase One. Coinbase One is a really good product too. I use it and it's one that and again, not Coinbase, not a sponsor of the show. This is just one of the platforms we use, but it is a good one and it's worth it. If you're interested in getting into these and maybe you're trying to experiment with ETH and learning about base and starting to see the direction of where Coinbase is going, this might be something you want to participate in. Another thing too that's happening right here, par parallel, of course, base starter packs uh, are going to be available this month uh, in the on-chain summer and they're going to include access to the parallel beta. So lots more uh, projects that are starting to develop on this. And again, this is all good news for Coinbase because this starts to move Coinbase, I won't say in a new direction, but it starts to identify their future and what that might look like. Further into uh, tweets right here, here's Jack Dorsey. And this is kind of where it gets a little interesting. Jack asked Brian Armstrong, why do you continue to ignore Bitcoin and Lightning? What crypto is a better money transmission protocol and why? Now, Brian kind of responds to this a little bit. We'll go to this next clip, let you guys listen in. Just thinking the layer two solutions have been around, you know, now I think Lightning was started back in 2015. What is it that has to happen to kind of break that free? You know, what's been holding back the usage of these layer two solutions to increase scalability? There was a couple, you know, we, we did a deep dive back then on Lightning and it was very nascent. It was frankly a little bit complex. Just the way that liquidity pools have to be spun up, transactions could be uh, received and sent on a mobile device where, you know, the app is not always in the foreground. These were the types of kind of challenges that we saw early on. And, and at that point, we determined Lightning wasn't ready. I think the layer two solutions on Ethereum, uh, like Polygon and Optimism and Arbitrum, um, base is built on one of those Optimism. They've actually gotten more adoption. Um, I'm I'm not trying to make a, you know, we're, we're supportive of every innovation in the industry and there's kind of, everybody has their favorite one. And so we're, we always have to be a little bit neutral, but we have seen pretty nice growth in um, Ethereum layer twos just in the last, I'd say like three to six months. All right, so one thing to note is that we put a call out about six months uh, to eight months ago, and it was to try to do uh, an innovation series on Lightning. And we went to some of the biggest project leads in Bitcoin 
and enlightening. And we're asking for these projects to kind of reveal themselves, let us know what they're doing, some of the things. We did not get that many people coming back to us. And the ones that we got coming back to us were not really that innovative. So I would agree with Brian in this sense is that, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer is that any of these protocols could potentially go because at any given time, innovation could kick off. But right now, it does not appear that way. I want to go to this next clip with Kathy Wood. Listen to what she had to say. There's this running narrative that lightning won't scale. And I think they, they look at, oh, there's only this many nodes or there's only this much uh, capacity in the channels to do it. We know that Jack Dorsey has, uh, uh, he, I think he's using Bitcoin as sort of his way to enter the emerging markets, right? Uh, but we don't hear a lot about it. Uh, I should say we're a shareholder of, of Block, but we don't, I'm always listening for it. First of all, analysts don't ask many questions about it. So are they, is it having success in, in the emerging markets? Uh, I, I, nobody's talking about it. Or in other markets, any markets. Um, they're investing a bit in lightning infrastructure. So building a protocol implementation themselves, building a lightning service provider, um, but they have not extended those products to the consumer quite yet. I mean, the tried and true business model so far in this industry is buying and selling Bitcoin. The next decade will probably be payment innovation. And I just think we're severely early and it's reflective in the products Jack has brought to market. It's reflective in his decisions. Jack's innovation in Bitcoin and payments, you're making an investment in the Bitcoin network. And so the solution and the technology is only as valuable as the network in some respects. There is a correlation there. And so it's very di difficult, right? Like my, my broader point is I just do think that it's going to take a little bit of time and some natural network effects and economies of scale for the network to grow, for Jack to have, or myself to have like immense, immense disruptive business success. All right, so I don't know if uh, Kathy was uh, too pleased with those answers because I think she's starting to look at this and say, hey, maybe we need more innovation happening here. And the other thing that we talk about a lot here is the speed of innovation. If you look at what's happening within the ETH ecosystem now on uh, you know, Optimism, with, which obviously is running on ETH, and the tie in to what the future of BASE is going to be, this starts to get uh, interesting. If you look at Kathy's portfolio, you'll notice Coinbase, number three right now in terms of her investment, glide path there and square Jack Dorsey number five down there. So I think this also indicates a little bit more of maybe the direction of where all of this is going. I want to show you guys some data also of not only lightning, but also where we're going to see growth. And, and this will all apply to base here in a second. One thing here, this is just coming from Bitcoin visuals uh, showing, you know, right here, you can kind of see some of the lightning network nodes, a little bit of a dip here, but really kind of a flat move right here all the way back pretty much till April of this of 2022, all the way into 2023. So that is a concerning factor. The other thing you would look at right here is Lightning Network channels also starting to actually dip. So if you look at Lightning as a whole, and just like any new innovation, and you know, listen, I've been in technology and software development for 25 years. I understand there's going to be those ebb and flows because innovation does take time. And in many cases, if you don't have the right teams, you know, kind of executing on these things, there can be those lulls, which is possible that Lightning could be facing that. But if it is, that's a really bad time for this to be happening for not only Bitcoin, but Lightning in general. So that in itself is something to keep an eye on. Now, if you jump over to Optimism, this is just looking at total transactions on OP right here, obviously going up. And this is, you know, we haven't even launched. Base has not even launched yet. August 8th is that date. So uh, interesting there. Then you look at their unique users over time. This is starting to skyrocket. And, and again, not even moving here. Uh, and we're talking about a pretty significant number. As you can see, these number of unique users now at 4.1 million. So very interesting stuff right now. I want to jump to this next clip. All right. And when you think about the idea of how the Lightning Network can work, could work, and its potential as the rest of the ecosystem of blockchain uh, starts to change, Raul Paul Powell has some interesting stuff to say. Listen in. There are other things that are happening that are attracting mindshare. Um, that, that, they don't, that they don't even need to do that. They just need to not insult other people. I, I, you, don't, I agree. 
you I, don't I create network participation and a thriving network by insulting people who don't share your view. You know, that's I, been proven I, I time and time. I, I'd argue, though, that Bitcoin wouldn't be affected by any insults that... Um, that, that it is, happen. because it's all about network growth. It's provable. And if you don't grow the network, then the value of the network is less. Because Metcalf's law would state that it's the number of connections on the network and the interconnectedness, right? Bitcoin has an issue with the interconnectedness because it doesn't use smart contracts as yet. It has some giant network participants, but networks aren't driven by the single large participants. It's driven by the whole thing. So what you've got to look at is what is the user growth and the transaction growth on Bitcoin versus other chains. And you'll find that it was more lackluster than others over the last 12 months and hence why it underperformed. If you are attacking them, then you're not going to unramp them. It's really that straightforward. All right. So this is getting in kind of inside baseball a little bit, what Raul talk, is talking about. But the core of what his basis points are is really boiling down to the growth. All right. So really, when you take a look at Ethereum, obviously, you can just see the activity on the network. And Raul kind of hits it is, is that, you know, Metcalf's law, the network effect, when you do have this much interconnectedness happening within a big node system like what's happening on Ethereum and also on Bitcoin to a certain extent, that's a great opportunity. The difference is, is there's a lot more growth in this. So I'd love to get you guys' feedback. You know, I, as you know, I'm a big ETH lover, but I also like Bitcoin. Now, I've often considered, is there a, an opportunity here to start looking at maybe some shift of the portfolio balance? How are you managing that? Are you looking at ETH more in line or in this next bull run? Or are you looking at more on the position of Bitcoin and the future of Lightning Network? Love to hear you. Because I think Coinbase has kind of shown their direction of where they're going to go. It's kind of interesting to watch. And I'll show you something on that here in a second. I want to go over to this. Uh, matter of fact, I'll show it to you now. This was in the report, the shareholder letter. And I wanted to show this. Let me see if I can zoom in on this a little bit here. This gives you just a, a trading volume, volume percentage. Bitcoin hasn't really ever really taken a large percentage share. So it's continuous that they've been able to hold, when I say they, meaning the customers of Coinbase, have been able to essentially hold this position around ETH and other assets. So this is another factor that I think goes into the future of where Coinbase is going. I want to go to this next clip right here. Let me see if I can pull this one up. And this one is talking about USDC and how its shift has occurred right now. And we'll talk about where it might go here in a minute. But listen in. The USDC market cap has been declining. Uh, when can we see a turning point for USDC market cap? Thank you. So I think we all know that when Silicon Valley Bank failed, USDC had a DPEG that precipitated a decline in USDC market cap. We are working collaboratively with Circle and to try and stabilize USDC and to grow. And we made our own numerous product initiatives in Q2 to try and engage further. This is public as well. Binance actually moved some of their funds from USDC into another stable coin. Um, but I think that the data we have on in the last six or seven weeks, I believe that, that um, the USDC market cap is up. Um, and there was sort of this perception that USDC had more of a U.S. nexus than um, Tether or something like that. And to be honest, I'm not sure how well informed that is because, of course, you know, Tether is storing U.S. dollars as well. And any bank, whether it's in the U.S. or not, um, that's storing U.S. dollars kind of needs to have a corresponding bank relationship. And it's within the uh, nexus or purview of the U.S. government. So I think that I'm not sure how well informed that perception was, but it sometimes perception is reality. All right, so I think you know everybody has watched the situation with USDC, and they kind of hit a, a couple things. Obviously, the Silicon Valley fall off. If you look at the market cap currently, this is all time, right here. But this is uh, 2022 of June. You saw this, and then right there, you saw that dip happening in March, uh, very significant, 43 billion, and then it's fell right here down to where it is right now at about 26 billion. So this is in uh, July. So. Again, this is, uh, has been indicative of what's happening in the market, some of the pressures on bank, people wanting to go to dollars as opposed to uh, crypto. That is a factor, but I think also if you look at Tether, the shift has been pretty significantly on an upturn. Now, this is where there's an opportunity because USDC most likely will start to reverse once we see whether it's base and or other aspects of that because remember, USDC running on ETH, ERC-20, all that ties together in terms of holding assets in these uh, stable coins. And of course, if we do get us some stable coin regulation, 
that changes the game dramatically uh, in a very big way, which I think is going to be uh, pending what will happen this fall over in uh, D.C. I want to go to this next uh, clip right here. This is talking about institutional money going in and on Coinbase. Listen in. How will Coinbase generate revenue from its custody of the upcoming spot ETFs? Should these applications get approved, it should broaden the reach of the asset class that some of the biggest institutions in the world seek to gain exposure to Bitcoin and eventually to other crypto assets for the very first time. We offer first and foremost secure crypto custody. And over the longer term, we'll explore ways to drive monetization via settlement, advanced trading, and API reporting. We're also entering into bilateral surveillance sharing agreements with major ETF listing exchanges, including the NASDAQ and SIBO. So I just want to emphasize that while the whole opportunity is exciting and has the potential to expand crypto adoption, there's a lot of work to be done before the ETFs are even approved and available. But the future is very exciting. We've seen growth in our prime platform quarter over quarter. So despite the market volume being down, that was an area where we did see growth. And we're seeing more and more institutions put money to the space. All right. So I think Coinbase is in a good position. You know, market is slightly down, even though if you look at securities, it's up. But point is, is there is some money coming off the sidelines, including institutional money. And we're pretty much at the doorstep right now of what I think is going to be a correction going toward a bull run. With all of that happening, Coinbase is going to be in a very, very good position. Now, the only thing that holds that up is the SEC. Listen to this clip of what they said about their current lawsuit. I want to be very clear. We do think we can win. Um, we expect to win. But it's important to understand that our goal um, across not just the litigation, but all of our efforts um, engaging with the SEC and engaging with the U.S. government as a whole is to achieve regulatory clarity. We think that's how we all win, regardless of the outcome of any particular case. Well, tomorrow, as it turns out, in our case in the Southern District of New York, we will be moving the court for an order dismissing the case in its entirety. And we're going to be uh, submitting a brief to that effect, which lays out all of our arguments for the court's consideration, which we expected um, to be fully submitted and taken under consideration at the end of October. Clarity itself is the goal. That's how we define winning, and that can come either through a court decision or legislation passed by Congress. All right, so that's Paul, Paul Graywell, the attorney for Coinbase, obviously active in this SEC case. Here's his Twitter today. Coinbase filed our brief asking the court to dismiss the SEC's case against us. Core argument is simple. We do not offer investment contracts as the term has been constructed by decades of Supreme Court and other binding precedents. So they're on it. And if they do get a favorable ruling, that could be one of the catalysts that start to correct what's happening in the markets right now. It also could trigger a slew of ETF approvals that the SEC might be uh, falling into as well. I wanted to showcase a little bit here about the motion. This motion was pretty significant, uh, but there was one statement in here I wanted to highlight. The Ripple Court found no investment contract based on facts substantially identical to those alleged here. They go back to a case law here. To accept otherwise would be to allow the SEC to do precisely what the Ninth Circuit said it couldn't do 30 years ago, turn any sale of goods contract into a security, which that was kind of the Orange Grove concept of pretty much anything could be a security in these third party markets. So again, this is a scenario that Coinbase is going up against. And I think they are pretty much, I look at this as, I won't call it a slam dunk, but it's definitely a very good position for winning. And if you listen to our friend, a metal lawman, he's pretty much in the same boat of saying this is a, this is definitely going to be a win. I want to jump over into um, another clip here, just on Coinbase as the legislation starts to roll out. This gets into a little bit more detail on it. Listen in. In just the past few weeks, the House Financial Services Committee and the House Ag Committee passed the landmark crypto market structure bill, FIT 21, and the stablecoin bill with bipartisan support. These bills go to the House floor for a full vote later this year, and from there, advance to the Senate. One in five Americans have now used crypto, more than hold a union card, as one point of comparison. And our Stand With Crypto campaign has signed up about 60,000 crypto advocates to date across all 435 congressional districts. Congressional town halls are happening all throughout the August recess, and we're encouraging Stand With Crypto advocates everywhere to reach out directly to their policymakers to support innovation and clear crypto regulation. All right. So, you know, he also looks at this. And I think the entire industry, if you have, by the way, if you have not followed all of our legislative videos, we break a lot of these down. We've covered these hearings uh, at 
length. And if you want to get caught up on them, go into our, our actual playlist on that. I'll show that to you before we leave the, the show today. But another thing you can do is jump over to coinbase.com and just go to their public policy list. This is actually Florida that breaks down whether you're right now the house is most important. Let me kind of zoom in on Brian Dan, Donald's there. Uh, but you can kind of see he's Florida District 19, shows his, his crypto sentiment currently positive. Uh, you can learn more about each one of these. There's Darren Soto, also been active in this. Uh, so quite a few. But if you are out there and you're trying to get active in this and maybe, maybe just trying to help the efforts of your own investments, the first step is making sure that you're in contact with your senator and your house rep. And the way you can do that is just check that out. And you'll find out quickly if they're pro or against. Um, and that'll help you a lot on being able to just send a note. And it's very easy to do that through the website. So check that out if you guys like it. All right, so just to, as a reminder, obviously, if you, if you guys are invested in coin, you know, you can kind of see a little bit of the run up here, which not not bad, you know, through the month of June, but it did have this correction right here. Again, I think a lot of this is still, you know, kind of the residue of what this SEC lawsuit is going to boil down to and also the regulatory front that still is in front of us. And that, I think, those two factors still are yet to play out. The good thing is, is that Coinbase does have a direction, and it's interesting. It's one toward crypto as a whole, definitely with a slant on ETH. So we'll see how this plays out. Let me know some comments down below of how you guys are playing the markets right now. We love to get your feedback. Of course, if you're not part of our Diamond Circle, make sure and get in. It's one of the best places you can get additional content, more podcasts, additional analysis. We do TA over there. All of that is in the Diamond Circle. Sometimes a lot of content that we do not provide here on the YouTube channel. All you have to do is click the link down below to join. Of course, you want to catch me. It's out there on Twitter, at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.